Today I'm going to show you how to sew a really easy surgery recovery pillow. This pillow can be made flat or it can be made with three sides like I have here so that it contours a little bit better. You can add a front and a back pocket to it if you want to to hold an ice pack so that you can put that up to any of your chest, abdominal, or shoulder surgery incision sites to help with any swelling. And you can also put your phone and remote control or whatever you need to if you have the pocket flipped outwards. This is also great to use in the car. It protects your incision sites from the seat belt, and it is just the perfect gift to give to anybody having surgery. If you are watching from our website, alohasewingcompany.com, welcome and sew along. And if you are watching this video and need the pattern pieces, you can go to the link below in the description box and print those out. So the first thing you're gonna do is get your fabric. You're gonna have your fabric right folded just the way you cut it and stack two pieces right on top of each other. With the front and back of your pillow fabric stacked on top of each other, place the straight side of your pattern piece up against the folds of your fabric. Trace it all around on top of the fabric and then you're gonna cut it out all at once with your fabric still folded. Here is mine all traced onto the top piece of fabric and I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. Just as a reminder, you can see my fabric is still folded and I have the two pieces stacked right on top of each other. I cut both the front and the back side of my pillow at the same time and now I'm going to open up the front side of my pillow. You can add a pocket if you want to, to the front or to the back or to both, or you don't have to add a pocket at all. The pocket that I'm making is for one of my husband's coworkers who's getting ready to have heart surgery. So we want a pocket on the front right here so that we can put an ice pack in it for her. So first let's go ahead and assemble that pocket piece. Get your pocket piece and flip it so that the right side is facing down. Next thing you're going to do is flip it so that you can see the sides of your pocket and you're gonna turn the side of your pocket inwards about one fourth of an inch or approximately a centimeter. It doesn't have to be exact, just do your best to measure it um, just to about this width that you're folding it upwards. Iron it in place so that you create a nice fold for the seam and then fold it up one more time and iron that flat. Go to the adjacent side of this pocket piece and you're going to do the same exact thing. These are the left and right sides of your pocket. Now that we have the left and right side done, let's go to the bottom and we're gonna do the same exact thing. Now let's go to the top of our pocket piece and fold it in again, just like we did before. And then for your second fold on this top piece, fold it in about three quarters of an inch to an inch and press that in place. Then you're going to take this to your sewing machine and top stitch just the top part right here of this pocket piece so that the top flap is nice and no seams will be shown. You're gonna sew a straight line right across this bottom edge of the fold right here. If you need to place some pins or clips all the way around this to hold your folds, you can do that if you need to. Here is mine sewn, I sewed it right across the top. You can see I stayed right by the bottom edge of this fold here, and that's gonna create the top piece for our pocket. Now we have our main front piece of fabric with a pretty side facing up. And you should still have a nice crease going down the middle from where you cut it on the fold. That's gonna be a placement guide mark to put your pocket. So go ahead and fold your pocket piece in half. Again, if you need to, put some pins or clips to hold those folds in place. So fold that in half 
and then you're going to press down so that you get a nice center crease out of that pocket piece. Once you have your center crease where you can see it, go ahead and match that center crease of your pocket up to the center crease of your main fabric for your pillow, right smack dab in the middle. Now you can pin or clip this in place if you need to, and then you're going to sew all the way around the sides and the bottom of this pocket piece. Just make sure that and when you're pinning or clipping it, go ahead and pin or clip it right where those center pieces meet, right there at the center folds. Take this to your sewing machine and sew using about a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around your pocket piece except for not across the top. Here's what mine looks like sewn in place. You can see it created the pocket here and there are no raw edges or seams showing because of the way that we folded and ironed this in place. Now with your fabric still facing you, facing up, get the other back side of your pillow and you're gonna have the fabric facing down so that the pretty sides of the fabric are kissing. This is the wrong side of my fabric facing up right here. After you do that, you need to decide if you wanna make one large flat pillow or if you wanna make the pillow a little bit more bendable to contour to your sides. The one large flat pillow, you're just gonna go ahead and sew all the way around it using a, about a half inch seam allowance, leaving about a four inch gap opening at the bottom where you see the left bottom picture here. If you wanna make the pillow more bendable, which is what I'm doing, you're gonna sew it like I'm going to show you here using three small openings at the bottom. You're gonna go ahead and pin or clip all the way around this. And again, if you're not making it bendable to contour to your sides as much, you're gonna go ahead and just sew all the way around. If you are making it bendable, follow these steps. You wanna leave about a three to four inch opening at the bottom left armhole. So put your finger about where the mid center piece of your armhole is and then follow it all the way to the bottom of your fabric and place a couple pins or clips just to remind you not to sew in this area. This is how you're going to stuff that area with some stuffing. You're gonna do the same thing by finding the middle center of your entire pillow where your crease is probably still and put pins or clips reminding you not to sew three to four inches across the bottom here as well. Then you're gonna to go to your right armhole find the middle point from that armhole at the bottom and adjust your pins or clips three to four inches so that you have that opening that you're not going to sew here in a second. Now starting at the left side, let's go ahead and sew all the way around this pillow right where you put the first pinner clip to remind you not to sew in that space and go all the way around the side, all the way across the top, all the way across the other side, and then going down to your very first pinner clip on the right side that you put to remind you not to sew that area closed right here. So you're not gonna sew right here and then you're gonna pick up sewing again right to the left of this clip here Sew a small line here, leave another opening right mid center of your pillow, and then sew your last line right to the left of that to the beginning of your very first opening. And again, you're only doing this if you are making that bendable, more contoured pillow shape. I'm gonna show you one more time the area that you're gonna sew for that one large flat pillow, leaving only one opening at the bottom, and to make the more bendable contoured pillow, there's the three openings you're leaving on the bottom. Here is mine all sewn. You can see I used about a half inch seam allowance. 
And as I'm doing the more bendable contoured pillow, you will notice that there are three openings I left down here at the bottom, just big enough to fit my hand through, about three to four inches in width. Now you have six corners at the top of your pillow. Go ahead and snip off your corners right up to the stitches, but not cutting through your stitches. You wanna do this so that way the corners are not as bulky when we flip this right side out here in a minute and the seams lay nice and flat. After you do that, anytime you sew at a curve like here, you're going to use some pinking shears and cut all the seam allowance across that corner to help it um, lay nice and flat with the curve. If you don't have pinking shears, just get your scissors and cut some slits right up to the stitches going all the way around your curve. Do that for both of your armhole curves and your bottom curved corners. Now starting at your middle opening, go ahead and flip this fabric right side out. I like to start by going in with my hand and grabbing the far left or right corner and turning this right side out. I also like to put my hand in there and smoothen out all of the seams with my fingers. And then I also get a chopstick and go in and poke my corners out and smoothen out all my seams so they lay nice and flat. Make sure you don't poke too hard so you don't go through your stitches. Now that we've got it nice and flat, you can see my pocket here in the middle and you can see my corners are nice and crisp and poked out and my curves lay nice and flat without any puckering because we made those little slits. Now you wanna take it to your iron, get out any of your creases, any of your wrinkles. If you're making the bendable contoured pillow, let's go ahead and make this into three sections. Starting at the right side of your pillow, right at the top left of the armhole, fold in that right flap so that the curve of that armhole is where your fold starts. You're gonna make a nice crease that we're gonna use as a sewing guide here in a minute. And you can see here, the fold starts right as that armhole starts to curve. Now you're gonna go ahead to the other side of the left pillow and do the same exact thing, folding in that flap inwards, right where the curve of your armhole starts. After you've done that, press it flat with your iron down that crease that we're trying to make just so that you can see the crease a little bit better once we open these flaps back up. seen mine too well but here are my creases make sure you can see yours because now we're gonna take it to our sewing machine and just top stitch following that crease all the way down on both sides you can see mine are here just from the top to the bottom following that crease that we just made and this sections your pillow off into three different sections Each one of these sections has one of those hole openings at the bottom so that you can stuff each section with your polyfill stuffing. You can use any kind of stuffing that you have on hand. I recommend polyester fiber fill stuffing. This one is a little bit stiffer, but it's what I had. Um, there are some that are much softer that you can use as well. If you have an old pillow, you can use that too. Go ahead and grab your stuffing and just start shoving it into the right side of your pillow 
and pushing it up into each of your corners, into all of your curves, and you're gonna do this for each section of your pillow. If you're making the one flat pillow, you only have that one hole opening at the bottom, so it should be pretty quick and easy for you to go ahead and get it in there and get it stuffed. Measure with your heart however fluffy or hard you want it, it's up to you. Now when you get to the hole opening at the bottom after you have it stuffed, Push your fabric inwards about a half of an inch so that it's flush with the rest of the fabric on the bottom. And you're going to pin or clip this closed. And then once you have all three sections stuffed or just your one main section, since you're making the large flat pillow if you are, go ahead and either sew this closed by hand using an invisible blind stitch, which is very quick and easy, or you can just take it to your machine and sew that opening shut using about a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. It's completely up to you how you want to close this. If you don't mind that stitch showing, it's totally fine to just use your machine if you can. If you are using your machine to close the bottom of this pillow, make sure to push your stuffing upwards just a little bit to give you some extra space down there to sew it closed. And then once it's closed, just push on the top of your pillow until that stuffing moves back down to the bottom of the pillow. And I do like to add the pockets on here, so that way you can add an ice pack. My husband and I are both nurses, so these are great for surgery recovery, especially for heart surgery, shoulder surgery, C-sections, uh, abdominal surgery, anything like that. You can add the ice pack that's reusable to that pocket and hold it to your incision site. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have fun sewing along with me. Please, please, please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see all of our easy sewing patterns as they're released. Visit alohasewingcompany.com or the link is down below in the description box on YouTube to see all of our super easy sewing patterns that you can print at home so you can start to sew faster. We make sewing patterns for literally everything from baby items, kids clothes, decorations, holiday stuff and gifts, bags and more. And before you go, mahalo.